Hey everybody, and welcome to Blast, final and totally unexpected episode of the Minecrafter's Guide to Bee Breeding. In this episode, I'll be showing you why the initial bee grind is so totally worth it, and how you can breed up to any bee species extremely fast, so that you can get a virtually infinite amount of almost any resource that you could possibly want. I'll be rocketing through this episode at breakneck speed, so if there's anything you don't understand, make sure you leave a comment, or hit us up at theminecrafters.com, or on our Facebook page. Enjoy! Now the first thing you want to do is make tons of pollen and tons of royal jelly. Pollen comes from industrious bees, royal jelly comes from imperial queens, and then make as much scented paneling as you can possibly make. Automate it with AE, whatever mod you choose, make a ton of it. Next, you're going to want to build a quarry. And the purpose of the quarry is to get a ton of bees, rocky bees specifically. We're going to go ahead and use them a little bit later, but make sure you build a quarry. Since you're already pretty epic, make sure it's a fast quarry. Now build another quarry, and maybe a few more, virtually destroying your entire world all for the sake of bees. After you've created these quarries and created huge 64x64 64 64 holes in your world, you'll have plenty of rocky bees so we can genetically mutate them a little bit later on. Next, make sure you have lots and lots and lots of DNA. I wouldn't squish all of your rocky bees, but they're a very good choice. Just make sure they're bee allies before you throw them in your gene pool. You can use hoppers to create a massive flow of them, chain together to continue to smash your bees and to make that DNA. You are going to need a bunch of this. Next, go ahead and build at least two of each genetic machine listed here. The isolator, synthesizer, purifier, and inoculator. Make sure the synthesizer and the purifier are hooked up to some sort of liquid piping that supplies them with DNA. Also, you're going to want to make sure that your machines are hooked up with power. These machines consume an absolutely absorbent amount of power, and you're going to make, want to make sure that you have a ton of it. Next, you're going to want to go find a slime, possibly in a swamp or deep underground, build a safari net that's reusable, and go ahead and capture the slime. Next, go ahead and build a mob farm. Put the safari net, the slime that you just got, inside your auto spawner and make a slime mob farm. You'll get a net gain of mob essence eventually, and you'll be able to use the mob essence later on for other things. Don't forget to set the auto spawner to spawn exact copy to no. If you're not sure how to build a mob farm, we do have a video tutorial on it. You can click the link here to go ahead and see it. Next, you'll want to make a soul shard. Actually, you'll want to make two. Just make them now, it'll be easier. Go ahead and grab a diamond, put some endstone, netherrack, and a glowstone in a pattern like this, and right click on the glowstone. That'll spawn a soul shard. The soul shard will be at tier zero, but we'll go ahead and use that in a second. Don't worry about it, make sure you make two. Next, go ahead and look up how to make an advanced enchantment table in any eye and build one. Surround it by enough bookcases so that you can get the maximum amount of enchants out of it and make yourself uh, a diamond sword. Why not? They're pretty good. Go inside the advanced enchantment table, put it up here, and go down to Soul Stealer. You're going to want to maximize the enchant of Soul Stealer on this, and I'm going to go ahead and switch to creative mode so I can do Soul Stealer 5, and then you're going to enchant your weapon. Once it's enchanted, take it, put it in your inventory, and head back over to your slime mob farm. Now take your enchanted diamond sword over to your mob farm that has a slime in it. Make sure you have your soul shard in your inventory, and go ahead and kill a slime. You'll notice that your soul shard now has six slime killed in it. And I've killed two so far, that's why it says 12. But for every kill, you're going to get six souls. And that is going to drastically increase the speed at which you acquire souls for your soul shard. The goal here is to get a tier 5 slime soul shard. And as you can see, in a very short amount of time, I've already acquired 127 souls from these slimes. After you've acquired 1,024 slime souls, Go ahead and make a soul cage, and go ahead and put your soul shard inside of the soul cage by right-clicking on it. What this is going to do is it's going to spawn an infinite amount of slimes, absolutely free, no power required. If you want to stop this process, go ahead and put a lever or apply a redstone signal to your soul cage to stop the flow of mobs into it. What this does is it provides you with an infinite, hassle-free amount of mob essence so that you can use it in the next step. Next, go into the nether. Find yourself a nether fortress, and then go ahead and find a wither skeleton. They're black, and they look just like this. Capture one, and make sure you bring it home. Don't die in the process. 
Now, with the Wither Skeleton Safari Net that you just got from the Nether, go ahead and build a Nether Mob Farm and start spawning these skeletons inside the Nether. You'll notice here that I'm on the Overworld, and I have that Safari Net inside my auto spawner, but it's only spawning normal skeletons, and that's on purpose. It will not spawn Wither Skeletons on the Overworld. You will have to make a Nether Mob Farm. Once you have your Wither Skeletons spawning inside the Nether, Go ahead and grab your diamond sword that you made with Soul Ceiling 5 and start killing them. You're going to need to use the mob essence that you've gotten from your slimes on the overworld, and you're going to need to send it into the nether via Tesseract or Ender Tank. You're going to have to stay there and kill a bunch of them. It won't take very long, trust me. With 6 souls per kill, it's going to go by pretty quickly. It'll take maybe 10 minutes, and you'll have a tier 5 soul shard for wither skeletons. And you should at this point have a bunch of wither skeleton skulls. Next, take the tier 5 soul shard that you got that's using wither skeletons and place them inside a soul cage on the overworld. Don't worry, the soul cages with wither skeletons will work on the overworld, which is really great. Go ahead and grind a bunch of those out with a bunch of grinders inside your, inside your mob farm to get these wither skeleton skulls, and also you'll notice that these things will drop spoils bags. Make sure you get the spoils bags by using either ME transition planes or some sort of collection device like obsidian transport pipes because the grinders will not accept these spoils bags. Inside the spoils bags, you're going to be looking for oblivion frames, and they look just like this. Now these are not craftable, and they're only acquired through random loot throughout the world. And these spoils bags provide a great way to get them, and it's a great thing that we're going to use in this quick bee breeding process that I'm about to explain to you. Once you have a bunch of wither skeleton skulls, go ahead and grab a few soul sand and put three skulls on top of it, just like this. The middle one is missing because I don't want to destroy my world, and go ahead and spawn in a wither. You're going to want to go ahead and fight your wither, make sure you actually win the fight, and then get the nether star that he drops. There it is. Now we have a nether star. Now make sure at all times you always have one nether star on hand. You're going to want to craft a tome of alkahest a bunch of glowing waters, and use those wither skeleton skulls you got from your tier 5 soul cage along with the diamond to duplicate your nether stars, okay? If you need glowstone because it's going to require a lot of it to make these things, go ahead and put a witch inside your mob spawner. That'll get you enough glowstone that you'll need to create these nether stars infinitely. Get about a stack of them. That should be plenty for as many bees as you want to start out with. And then if you want more nether stars, just go ahead and repeat the process, okay? So nether stars and an infinite amount of nether stars at the beginning is what we're going to need to get any bee that we want. Let's go ahead and move into the next phase. Now we'll go ahead and get into the real bee side of this tutorial. Go ahead and build an aviary. Build one in the nether too. You're going to need some bees that can only be bred in the nether, like austere bees, sinister bees, stuff like that. If you use a nether star on them and they do not mutate to what they are supposed to mutate to, you are probably breeding in the wrong environment. I cannot stress that enough. You'll need austere bees. Do it in the nether. And then go ahead and build 10 more. But build one that's going to be your mutation station. And this is my recommended build here. We have an alveary rain shield, a frame housing, a lighting, and three mutators. And this is what's going to be used to mutate all the bees that we're about to make. In the frame housing, go ahead and put one of your oblivion frames that you got from your spoils bag, and in one of the mutator slots, go ahead and drag a nether star. Now at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and select which bee that you actually want to breed to. Assuming that you already have your imperial, and you already have your industrious, we're going to go ahead and go for something a little bit better. Let's go ahead and try to make the tolerant drone. Find the drone or the princess that you want to breed to, select R and NEI, and go ahead and find out what it takes to make that. So a rocky and a diligent, and the diligent comes from the industrious line, will make a tolerant. Make sure you have your nether star inside a mutator, you'll only need one, and make sure you have your oblivion frame inside the frame housing. Go ahead and put two of these bees together, the breed, and in about 25 seconds, you're going to have two purebred tolerant drones. And now here they are, a tolerant princess and a tolerant drone. Now one important thing to note here that the to is that the tolerant princess has that shortened lifespan icon right here, just like we talked about in the previous episodes. That's okay, don't worry about that for right now. But also, don't think that you can just start plowing ahead and start breeding more bees, because you're gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble if you do that. Go ahead and grab your two drones, or your princess and your drone, and bring them over 
to your genetic machines. You're going to want to bring them straight over to your inoculator because you're going to want to inoculate these with a fertility that's a little bit higher than what they have now. Now these say unknown, but I bred them or I've made them with rocky princesses, so chances are they probably have just a one fertility rate, which means they only will drop one drone and one princess per cycle, so I'll never get any extra. So you can go ahead and use normal, high, or maximum fertility and inject these with them so they drop more than one drone. Once you've injected them, go back to your mutation station, breed them together, and start getting excess drones. Once you get the excess drones, start putting them inside the isolator and try to isolate the tolerant serum for the species. Once you have the tolerant serum, go ahead and save it, stash it away for later. Congratulations, now you have the tolerant serum forever. You will never lose that species, and you can go ahead and use your rocky bees, which you've gathered from all your huge quarries, and go ahead and re-inoculate the rocky bees with the tolerant bees serums to make tolerant bees whenever you need them. And that's going to be a cycle that's going to be repeated continuously throughout this entire process. You're always going to want to make sure that you get the serum before moving on. Even if it's an insignificant in your eye species, make sure you grab that serum because you never know when you're going to need it again in the future. Another important thing to note before I go ahead and move on here is that that shortened lifespan trait that you see there in the tolerant process, when that goes into a serum, that will disappear and you'll be able to apply the serum to a, to a regular bee that does not have the trait and you won't have that shortened lifespan trait. So that's how you weed out that shortened lifespan trait because that will um, cause the princess to randomly die out at some point. You definitely do not want that to happen, okay? So that's how we take care of that shortened lifespan trait. We get the serum and we inoculate a bee that doesn't already have it, okay? Now, we wanna go ahead and use our tolerant princess that we already have, and we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and combine it with a rocky drone. Make sure you have one of your vast supplies of nether stars inside your alviary. alviary. Go ahead and put a tolerant. You can go ahead and put a rocky bee inside there. And we are going to breed to the next bee. And there it is. Now we have a robust princess and a robust drone. And this trait is randomly applied. That shortened lifespan trait is randomly applied to all these bees. But now we have our next species. And they're going to be purebred. I don't even have to beelize these things. They're going to be purebred. If you use the nether star, it's a guaranteed. Take your robust drones, go back to your isolator, get the serum, save the serum, and then continue the process, rinse and repeat, until you have any bee that you want. Keeping in mind that these oblivion frames, and don't put more than one inside of your alveary because it's not going to do any good, will shorten the lifespan to 25 seconds, and you can rapidly breed these bees. Now to basically put this entire tutorial into a very short summary, you're going to use all the rocky bees that you get from your quarries, and you're going to combine them with the different species serums that you've collected through your breeding process down to your alveary, and then you're going to create any bee that you want using the rocky bees. The problem with the rocky bees is that they have a fertility that's low and a speed that's very slow as well. So what you're going to have to do is go ahead and find some of your serum vials that have maximum productivity, uh, fastest speed, um, highest fertility, whatever you want to put on there, inoculate your bees with the maximum or the best serums that you can possibly get, and then go ahead and throw them inside a really beast alveary with tons of frames. Now I'm going to say one more thing about that in a second, but before I move on, what you're going to want to do, and the reason that we made so many of these, is so that one of your inoculators can be used to inoculate a bee with maximum fertility. Once they have maximum fertility, move it down, give them high speed. Um, this is injecting them with the quantum species right here, so I'm injecting all of my rocky drones and rocky princesses to make new quantum drones. Once I have the quantum drones, I'm going to go ahead and throw them back inside the inoculators to inoculate them with the desired stats that I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them in an automated alveary to infinitely produce all kinds of great resources. And that's basically this entire process. Now I know it was a lot of other stuff and there was a lot of other things included in this tutorial that don't necessarily have to do anything with bees. But once you do get to this point in the game, and again, it's going to require a lot of resources, it's going to require a lot of power, and you just can't do this right out of the gate. I do understand that. But once you cross that threshold, after you've gotten your industrious, and after you've gotten your imperial bees, there's going to be a lot of great things to come. Well, Captain, you've told us that bees are so great, but you haven't really told us what you can actually get from them. Well, if you go ahead and search in any eye, you're going to find that there's hundreds and hundreds of bees. Well, maybe not that many, but there's a lot. And if you have extra bees, it's going to add more to the default amount that forestry adds in there. So, what can you get with these bees? 
Well, you can get all kinds of things, and I haven't put all of them inside of here. Most of them are s fairly self-explanatory. You can get iron, gold, copper, tin, silver, uranium, clay. You can get blaze. You can get seeds. You can get tungsten, titanium, ruby, emerald, lapis, even oil, petroleum, milk, alcohol. And uh, a couple of them that I'll definitely recommend here are the sorceress drones, and these can be found uh, generally all over the place in the wild. They're a little bit tough to uh, acclimate to uh, your climate if it's not uh, in a desert, but they're going to produce mundane combs, which is going to get you magic wax, which is going to allow you to make the essence of everlasting durability, which is going to get you this resilient frame, which is the strongest, most highest productivity boosting frame in the game. Once you have a bunch of these bees going on cycle, start injecting these frames inside your alvearies that have lots of frame housings in them to maximize the production of all of your combs. Yeah, it might not take that, it might take a little bit while, a little while at first, but you're going to eventually get tons of stuff from these combs. Now, just be aware, in case you're under any disillusions, ruby is not going to produce direct ruby. It's going to make these things called fragments. Same thing with emerald and a bunch of these other things. These are going to make nuggets. They're not going to make actual bars or, uh, or ore. But once you have these things going and once you have them in highly automated alvearies, you're going to leave for a day and you're going to come back and you're going to be laden with resources, I promise you. Another one that I'll recommend here are these monastic drones, and you can buy these from villagers um, with a few emeralds, I believe. And they'll produce mellow cones, which in turn will create nether quartz for you. Imagine never having to go to the nether again for all of your applied energistics needs. This is a great bee. Even greater is the quantum princess, which will produce certus cones, which will produce certus quartz and nether quartz all in one. Okay? Ruby, great for Greg Tech if you have it. Titanium, there's also uh, shiny combs, which produce platinum. The, the possibilities are, are almost endless. And once you have a big enough, big enough factory, once you've created tons of alvearies, you can get all kinds of great stuff from these bees. This is a great mod. All right, here we are, back to where we started right at the beginning. I hope this tutorial has been informative. I know I didn't explain a lot of the other mods that I've already used, but we do have a lot of tutorials on them on our website already. This has been Captain Jack's guide to extreme bee breeding and i hope you become a bee believer as always guys thank you for watching make sure you check us out on all of our social media pages here and as always stay poised